We know you don't have a lot of time, so really just yeah. want to take a few minutes to ask some questions and get your impressions. I think Jim has the first question for you. Well, I thought it might be helpful for the other people in the Advocacy Corps to hear what's it like to be a young person there and a person of faith? How important is the role of young people and people of faith in this conference? Yeah, that's actually the thing that I've found has been the most important. A lot of the people here are um, are climate warriors who have been doing this for a long time, who are of, of your age, Jim, or kind of my parents' generation. Um, and the people, especially people of faith, have been talking a lot about how do we how do we talk to young people about this. And so I've been sitting in conferences and in meetings and thinking, well, I, I am a young person and I do care. So I've, I've had a lot of really productive conversations with um, faith leaders from groups like Arasha. Um, I had a really great conversation with George Marshall, who wrote Don't Even Think About It, um, Why It's Hard for Us to Understand Climate Change. And I asked them, you know, how, how do I as a youth respond differently to climate change than an older person? And kind of working on bridging that intergenerational divide when we're talking about, about the issues. So it's been really interesting as a young person um, being here talking to members of the faith community um, and and learning a lot about forgiveness um, and and realizing that forgiveness is an essential part of communicating um, between generations so as a young person and an older person but also between um, communities so there's a lot of indigenous groups that are here um, in the green zone so I'm gonna really quick it's everything starting to close down, but I'm going to give you a little visual of where I am right now. That's great. One second. I'm not sure if it'll let me switch my camera. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. So oh, it's yeah. starting to close down, but this is the forum area. Um, and then this that I'm going right in front of, these are some conference rooms. This is the Nelson Mandela Auditorium. And um, this building is huge. And there are... Um, there are stands and groups of people from every walk of life. Um, there, yesterday I spent some time learning um, a Finnish song. Um, they, they were talking about how, how their land rights, uh, an indigenous Finnish group, um, their land rights were being um, taken advantage of and, and they were drilling for oil underneath their, their home. And right next to them were, were a group from the Amazon, um, and they had brought an entire canoe, like one of those canoes that you that you carve out of a single tree, was was right right there, and they were telling their story around it. So the idea of forgiveness isn't isn't just you know me ask or like people that are older than me seeking forgiveness for the younger generation. It's people like me who are in this privileged community seeking forgiveness from, from those whose lives are affected that haven't contributed to the problem. Um, so that perspective of, of forgiveness and seeking forgiveness, um, I think is, is really important, especially in the context of, of faith. That's really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about what an average day has looked like for you? Like what types of meetings you're sitting in? Who are the people you're talking to just in an average day? Yeah, um, so it's, for me, I haven't had one specific average day, but for an example, um, the first day that I got here, I was at a conference with um, over 150 Christians from different um, denominations talking about a Christian response to climate change specifically. Um, I got to hear Catherine Vejo speak at that event. Um, yesterday, I came to the Green Zone, um, and I spent some time in a panel discussion. I'm talking about um, gender and resilience in climate change. Um, Today, I went to a really fantastic panel um, that featured um, Bill McKibben, among other people, uh, talking about um, fracking, uh, fracking in the context of climate change, and not just in the U.S., but also internationally, um, the issue of fracking in um, Thailand, and there was a, a panelist from Argentina um, talking about fracking in his country, and so it's just been so much learning, <laughs> so I'm trying to put into words um, just how moving it's been um, to be here and hear how hard people have been working. Um, yeah, is that is that a good enough answer? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's fabulous. I, I guess the one other thing we wondered before we let you go is, you know, <laughs> speaking to young people in the advocacy corps and other young people in the United States, how is it, how important is it, and what kind of sense do you have 
sitting on standing on the floor in the Paris conference of the importance of young people engaging on this issue with our government back here. Any specific advice or hope that you can see? Yeah, absolutely. So I think I think the first thing um, is that we have we have the voice, we have the time, and we have the motivation. So our voices are unique in this conversation because before us, again, our parents, our grandparents saying, okay, what's the world we're going to leave for our children? Um, and now the conversation has shifted. The, world, the conversation is, what is my future going to look like? What is the world that I'm going to see myself living in? So so that's, that's one thing. I forget the two other things that I listed already, but the idea that that my time matters, if I'm going to invest in this, this is not an investment in I mean, it's not an investment in, oh, this is something that I can put on my resume and check off. This is an investment in my future and the time that I'm spending here doing this work and learning about this issue and learning how to advocate for change um, is is an investment in my future as well as in the world's future. Um, and the motivation, we have everything to lose um, we as young people, if we don't address this, um, and yeah. If, if you, what's the message you're going to bring back to your rep, your representative in your sentence? Yeah. So I think I think a message that I that I would bring back the importance of the United States. I'm going to repeat that But the message that I would bring back is. We, we are leaders in this area as a country, and and it is vital for our senators and representatives to look at what our constituents are saying, but also look beyond just constituents. Um, and I know that's that's really tricky to sell, um, but everyone knows someone who's connected to a part of the world that's that's affected by by climate change, and I think. The more direct impact that I would say would be we pride ourselves on our American exceptionalism. We pride ourselves on on being the first one to take a step in the right direction. And if we don't take that step with climate change, we're going to be left behind um, in technology, um, in energy, and in respect. In respect from other countries, because they know that if we aren't taking this seriously, we're not taking them, their concerns, their peoples, their culture, their livelihood seriously. Um, so that's a, I know that's a really tricky message to, to talk to a senator and representative about. So I'm still working on figuring out how to say that. Um, but but yeah, just if we want to maintain our leadership as a country, we have to be willing to take the lead on this. Yeah, thank you. I think that's really true, and I'm really excited to hear how um, what your meetings and will, will be like with your congressman, and how how this will happen going forward. So thank you so much for your time. I know you have to be exiting the building, uh, but we really appreciate yeah. taking a few moments, and we will look forward to seeing you soon. Great to yeah. see you. Take care, Laura. Yeah.